friends welcome back to my channel and if you're new my name is Sheila and I'm so excited to have you here today for another reading vlog but I'm particularly very excited about this reading vlog because it's going to be a little bit different than my previous videos where I've taken you along on my journeys of reading through books because all of my past reading vlogs have been about fiction and we're not reading fiction in this one we are reading or shall I say studying a non-fiction historical book and the fact that I'm saying that and we're doing this video together just makes me so happy because if you don't know I I'm a, his I'm a history student. I have two degrees in history. I have a bachelor's in history and a uh, master's in applied history and I work as an archivist. So history is a very near and dear subject to me and I am so grateful to be able to work and live in the field itself and work with researchers and get to do my own research and learning is just a hobby for me that I absolutely love. I've always been curious and I love just learning about different subjects and one of my favorite subjects growing up and still to this day is American history specifically in the late 19th century early 20th century or the second industrial revolution and to even make that more specific social history so the study of people and what life was like back then for them and when all of these different changes were going on. Now, something that I'm trying to also do is just learn more about black history and African American history because it is so critical, you know, for us to learn about uh, the history of people that are marginalized and have been enslaved in this country so we can know better and do better. And it's also something I'm very interested in. I've always been interested in African American history in school and just always, you know, found interest in it but for the fact that it's March and it's Women's History Month and we just came out of February which is Black History Month I wanted to read a book that kind of explores the themes and topics of Black American women's history so with that said that's why we are reading Wayward Lives, Beautiful Experiments, The Intimate Histories of Righteous Black Girls, Troublesome Women, and Queer Radicals by Saidea Hartman. So this book I picked up from Harriet's Bookshop, which is a local bookshop based in Philly. I highly recommend that you support Black-owned bookstores or local bookstores in your area if you can. It's really important to support those communities monetarily as best as we can as well. And I heard about this book through Harriet's Bookshop because I'm on their mailing list and it was on their list for books to read during Black History Month. I actually wanted to read this book last month for Black History Month, but I just wasn't in the mood to read a nonfiction book. I was really just kind of in a place where just wanting to get lost in fiction. So yeah, I'm really excited to take you along as we read this book. I just wanna kind of go through and pick out different subjects in here because since it is a nonfiction book, I want to share and teach what I learned. And that's also why I've always been interested in social history and not, you know, history specifically about <laughs> the rich white men, but just about the marginalized and the unknown people and what their stories are. And that is what Saidiya Hartman, the author's focus is in her work. She's a literary scholar, author, and also a cultural historian. So she likes to study the unknown people in history. And that is what really this book is diving into, specifically the unknown women that were migrating to the Philadelphia and New York areas in the late eight in the late 19th century. So slavery ended in 1863 with Abraham Lincoln. At that point, you know, reconstruction started in the South and that was basically just slavery took on a whole new system, a whole new way of operating. So now that the in formerly enslaved people, black people in the South, they were realizing that they could travel and move and a lot of them were migrating up North into uh, northern cities such as Philadelphia, New York, Chicago, Detroit, and settling there. And this book particularly looks at Philadelphia and New York, which is also why I was really interested in picking up this book because I live outside of Philadelphia and I work in Philly and want to learn more about Philadelphia history, but also, you know, the black person or black woman's experience in Philadelphia during this time when there is a large migration of former enslaved people coming up north. So the really interesting thing that this author 
the technique about this book, which is also what I really love, is that she is using historical records, archival records, because this is a, although this is a non-fiction book and she's writing about history, the fact that there are unknown, the fact that there wasn't a lot of thing, a lot of stuff written about the subjects she's studying, she kind of has to, you know, fill in those gaps. So when you have documents that don't tell you much about a person, how do you you know, tell that person's story. And that's when the author came up with what she coined critical fabulation, which is basically filling in those gaps in the historical record through literary narrative. So this book really reads like a novel, but it's all about, you know, the historical lives of these women, which I absolutely love. And I've already been reading this I'm on page, what page am I on? I'm on page 138 and I'll tell you this, it reads like a novel. The Hartman's like prose is just amazing, the way she uses words, but the fact that she's also a historian just blows my mind. That's just something I wish I had a skill at to be able to study and turn history into something beautiful as liter as a literary work. So yeah, I highly recommend this book, even though I haven't already, I haven't finished it. It's just amazing. And what we're gonna be doing in this vlog is just kind of going through and exploring the different topics that I come across. The author is exploring different people and figures during this time period, and we are introduced to them as characters. And she actually has a character list at the beginning of the book that tells you all of the cast of characters that she is that she has researched and that she's writing about and like our cast of characters go from you know well-known names like w.e du bois or ida b wells or helen parrish and to people that don't even have names like girl number one girl number two the window shoppers the thing that i'm most excited about that just tells you how much of a nerd I am is the notes section in the back because when we're reading nonfiction, we wanna like see where the author has been referenced. Like where did they get, you know, this quote or where did they get this information? It's, it's where they they cite their work. So which that's why the notes page just becomes your best friend when you're reading because it also doesn't just cite where the information's coming, it can give you annot like annotated information it gives you a little bit more like context to what they're writing so i'm just learning a lot and finding other things to read or add to my tbr um i was reading about w e du bois that was the chapter i just finished prior to this when he was sent to the seventh ward in philadelphia to do a social study basically he was a sociologist and he was sent to figure out like why all the problems and crimes were happening and he went with a sociologist high. So that was really interesting to learn about his role and his perspective, which was very different from the folks that were living in the Seventh War. These are the pre-ghetto, the, the emergence of the slums in these larger cities. So yeah, that's just a little bit about the book. We're gonna dive more into that. And I feel like I just keep on rambling because when I know so much and absorbing so much, I just want to share as much as I can, which can, be a lot and yeah that's just all i've been doing today it is saturday and i don't have a lot going on which is great i've just been dedicating most of the day to reading and studying right now i think i'm just going to get back into reading i haven't read in a few hours and my goal was to read 50 pages today and i'm not i'm only like 20 pages in so we have I think if I could get through this chapter at least, because we have quite a few more pages in this chapter and maybe start the next chapter. So right now I'm in a chronicle of need, need and want, which is looking at um, two white women of the Philadelphia elite named Hannah Fox and Helen Parrish, who found purpose in slum reform. So. The other thing to think about at the end of the 19th century is women were, you know, fighting for rights to do more. They were, they were, they were tired of being part of that Victorian image of the nice, and of course we have to think about this in the context of white women, white wealthy women where kind of they fit in that when we think of a Victorian era, when we think Jane Austen, when we think Bridgerton, Downton Abbey, those are the upper class wealthy women. And 
they were tired of sitting around doing nothing and just living a life to find a suitor and marry and that's it. So we have these two women, uh, Hannah and Helen, that are rebelling against this patriarchy and they wanted to do something more. So they bought two tenements in on St. Mary Street in Philadelphia and are managing them. So then we have these two women that are, become basically landlords and the, the chapter opens up with them fighting to get rent from the, ten, the tenants. And in this neighborhood, we have, you know, the black people as well. We have black people, but we also have Irish folks, Italian folks, Russian Jews. Those are the cultures and people that make up this area. And back then, Italians, Russians, and the Irish people were considered at the bottom as well. Like they were still white, but they weren't seen as like the good white people. So they were kind of living amongst the slum with also the black people as well. That's kind of where I'm at. I'm reading about Helen and her struggle to connect with the black women ten tenants that she had, which is just really interesting because just imagining these, the, these white women that are going off on a mission to help, help the poor, help, you know, the marginalized and they're not able to develop a connection or relationship with them that they imagined like they she's just trying desperately to quote reach them the author is talking about but the black women just don't have time for her don't want to deal with her <laughs> it's just really interesting so yeah let's just dive back in to reading and figure out where else i am going to go So I ended up going into my Notion and creating a project board, whatever you want to call it, for Wayward Lives, the book, so I could add all of my notes into there. And I ended up trying to make it pretty by adding, you know, the book cover and images in there and so forth. If you'd like to see a more in-depth tour of my notes inside of Notion, let me know. But the way I really organize my notes is by chapter because that's just the way my brain works. And my goal is to understand the thesis or the summary of that chapter. Because basically what I want, my goal is that I want to be able to communicate what I learned in the chapter or teach it or share it, i.e. to somebody I'm talking to or on YouTube. And I want to find out what the core arguments were, the main uh, facts and people that were in there. So I just went back and looked at all of my underlining and any written notes that I took and just reviewed some of the key parts of each chapter and transferred them into my notion so I kind of have my summary to look back on. <laughs> In continuing my journey through this chapter that explores Helen Parrish's slum reform endeavors, I was introduced to a 19-year-old black woman named Mammy Shepard who wants to rent one of Helen's apartments. Helen initially sees Mammy as someone who is, quote, clearly needed no help and was not suited for the neighborhood, unquote. Mammy was insistent, however, and no longer wanted to live at her mother's house. She became a new resident on St. Mary Street then. 
But within a month of moving in, Mammy is accused of having sexual relations with men that are not her husband. To Helen, this is against the law or moral code of respectability in American society at the time. Once more, the man who moved in with Mammy, who says who she says is her husband, named James, is actually not her legal husband. Again, Helen cannot have this. Helen evicts James, but James tells Helen that he loves Mammy and that should be enough for them to live and be together. They don't need a legally binding marriage contract in order to love each other and be together. Sadly, James's story ends in tragedy. Overall, the chapter looks at the dichotomy between black intimate life and white intimate life and opened my eyes to how slavery has affected how black people love and have intimate relationships. The author only really has Helen's diary entries to write this chapter, so we're really left to wonder what Mammy and James's side of the story is. Hartman does a beautiful job using critical fabulation to paint Mammy's story as best as she can from a literary standpoint, which I really loved. We gain a deep look into Mammy's life, her desires, and struggles as a black woman living in Philadelphia in the late 19th century. In one section of the book, we learn that Mammy likes to go out in the town and kind of walk around the city and explore, and she really enjoys going to the theater. And she often wonders what it would like to be an actress herself. And I think this scene really shows us that a lot of Black women were coming to the North because of the feeling of hope and optimism that they had of a better life. You know, life in the South at that time was not something that, you know, ambitious and forward thinking and just these women, these Black women wanted to live anymore. And when they had the opportunity to leave and try something new, they took it. And that's really an underlying theme throughout this entire book is that all of the characters or women that we meet are really just trying to find themselves in this new way of living, in this new geography, this new location. And even while they are exploring these parts of themselves and how life could be, they're still faced with racism and abuse and just god-awful things that the author doesn't leave out of the book. We're fa- the book really looks at the positives and negatives of what it meant to be a Black woman living in the North in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Mm-hmm.